Hi, this is uh, a video from Delorean Weekend 2018. I'm Bob Brandis. I'm Chris Miles. And we're going to be doing a vented disc brake conversion to the 97 Delorean time machine. Yeah. So um, follow us with our yeah. progress and uh, think about doing this upgrade to your car. Hi, my name is Santiago Ortega and I'm uh, from Chicago, Illinois. So the first step is taking the front tires off. So after you take off the wheels, you want to take off the brake calipers. And that's a 19 millimeter uh, socket. Next you're going to want to remove the uh, axle nut to remove the whole hub and uh, disc. I am uh, releasing the rotor from the wheel hub and it's secured by three bolt or four bolts. Gently remove and you're good to go. Then you can play frisbee. <laughs> so solid and as you can see this is they're almost like two pieces and there's more cooling. So hopefully we get a little bit better braking. We want to do a test fit to make sure that they uh, line up mm -hmm. the right way. Make sure the uh, recess part of the new disc brake is towards the car um, so you don't put them backwards. Okay. And then uh, on the vise we put a nice rag so that way the new disc doesn't get marred up when we're installing it. Back on. Just hand tighten them so that way you don't have to worry about any kind of cross thread or anything like that. So only snug them down uh, and then you got to make sure you torque them to spec. Put some oomph into it man. 50% done. So for the new vented disc brakes to fit, um, you have to put a spacer on a caliper. So this little guy essentially is going to go in right here. This gets unbolted and it splits apart and then you put this right there. You want to take these uh, pins out that would hold your brake pads in. Put those to the side because you don't want to lose them. Don't want to lose any of the hardware. Next, you're going to want to take these two screws out, these two bolts out. One of them's 5 eighths, the other one's 9 sixteenths. And simple as that. Falls apart. Spacer. And then you're going to need to use the new bolts um, because they're quite a bit longer than the old ones. About half an inch longer. So we need to add a new seal here and we need to add a new seal here so that the passageway don't leak. Free. Make sure the mating surface is nice and clean um, because if you don't clean it out, there's going to be leaks and then you're going to have to take everything apart and redo it. Now 
The spacers may not look like they are a fit. Um, they might be a little bit off, but essentially their job is just to make the caliper a little bit wider. See what I'm talking about here, how they don't sit flush? It's okay. On some of them, you might have to grind down these points because they won't fit in between the calipers, but this one, you're good to go. Tighten it from the inside out. Disc brakes usually come with a coating, uh, so that way they don't rust while they're in the packaging. So what you wanna do is make sure you get some brake clean and uh, rub that off, um, just so that way your brakes perform like they're supposed to. removes any kind of oils and crap like that. And this bad boy smoothly just slides on there like that. We're gonna have to uh, test fit the caliper to make sure that it doesn't rub against the hub or any other moving parts. I have to be very tight, but give us a good idea. As you can see here, um, the hub is actually rubbing against the bottom of the uh, caliper itself. So, oh, also, um, there's spacers that are included in, in the kit. It goes in between uh, the caliper and its mounting hub. Well, let's tighten it up and let's see uh, what happens. Okay. Pull it out. Okay. And then I'll slip it in. That's the way to do it. Nice! Okay. All right. There we go. There's the bottom one. Nice. So we did a test fit um, because whenever you're switching, you know, putting parts from one car that aren't supposed to be there, you want to make sure that they fit. Um, if you look over here real quick, on some of the cars, these nubs have to be ground down, uh, but thankfully we didn't have to do that on this one. And if you look right here, the hub is very, very close to the caliper. It's barely rubbing, so what we're going to do is we're going to take down just the leading edge of this caliper and that should give us enough space so that way it doesn't rub because if you can hear um, I don't know if you can hear it but it's barely touching um, but you got to make sure that you put those washers um, you know on the caliper bolts because um, if you don't then the caliper itself would be more this way and then these nubs on the other side would rub I don't know if you guys can see this very well but right here where the paint is gone is right where the uh, caliper was rubbing We're just gonna grind that down a little bit and uh, hopefully they don't rub. Always wear safety protection. Safety, number one priority. So you can see the difference between this nice curved edge right here versus this straight edge right here. Already grinded them down and you can actually see the gap difference over here and uh, if you spin this around you actually don't hear any kind of rubbing or grinding noise which is really nice it's all free. so you see right here there's a nice uh, I don't know a couple mil you know eighth inch gap or so I'm actually gonna disconnect the caliper from the brake line right here that's a 13 millimeter wrench So on the old calipers, they had these pins that fit to hold in the pads. The problem with using those are, since we use a spacer, they're way too small. The kit comes with these cotter pins that honestly I think are kind of janky and they're one-time use only. We're actually gonna make our own pins out of this uh, stock.
couldn't have been any better than that, to yeah. be honest with you. So yeah, I'd like to cut it right around that line. Yeah. We have our nicely uh, precision made uh, brake pad pin. And the other side goes in just like that. And now that won't come out. We just put the new brake pads in and we put the pins in and we're just clipping them up right now. We're not hitting any, any caliper or anything, it's just the pad right here. Oh yeah, it still spins. Yeah. Freely enough. This is a new stainless hard brake line that was included in the kit and it replaces the regular steel one that usually is on the car. So it's just a nice little uh, upgrade to, to do while you're doing this. So right now we have the caliper in with the spacers, the vented discs, and uh, everything's nice and tight. We just uh, finished installing the um, stainless steel uh, brake line, the one that comes off the caliper to the main line. And uh, as you can see, everything uh, spins freely. So now we're gonna do the passenger side. The dust shield was uh, interfering with the disc and it was rubbing, so we just punched it out a little bit. I think, I think it'll be all right. has better clearance or yeah. tolerance. So if you see this one, um, the spacers right here line up with the vent, uh, with the washers that were included. If you look on the other side, the, the spacers themselves are to the right of the vent. Um, so therefore we're gonna have to get a washer to move the caliper, yeah, the, the caliper a little bit towards more, more on the inside of the car. So now that uh, we put those washers in, you can see that the spacer, you know, is right in the middle, and you can actually fit both brake pads easily without any uh, issue. And there isn't any as much play anymore. Yep, there's not it's as perfect. much play. Put in DOT4 brake fluid so we can lead the brakes.